Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. This week, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite Photoshop technologies, and that is the ability to use layer comps and the related scripts that go with them. Oftentimes, when we're designing graphics for video, there's subtle differences between each graphic. Should the logo bug be visible or off, with a drop shadow, without, maybe a color change. Oftentimes, you end up with very subtle differences between the graphics, and it could be a nightmare as you get folders and folders of all these different variations that you try to keep track of. Well, fortunately, Layer Comps makes it easy because you could store multiple designs within a single document. Let's see how. So I've opened up a document here, and you'll see there's lots of different pieces. We have some logos, we've got some different text treatments that we're going to try, we have some objects like the pill, and different things that we're going to use here in the overall design, with shapes, without, etc. What's going to drive all this is the use of the layer comps window. Now you can have several layer comps within a document, and each look is simply a combination of layers being turned off and on. Let's go ahead and make the thumbnails a little smaller here so you can see more of them at once. So there we go. As we step through here to each look, you'll see different layers get turned off and on. So for example, this look has the shadow enabled. If I wanted to make an alternate of this, I can go ahead and add a new layer in here. Let's come down here to the bottom. And on this layer, I'll say, you know, let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And go ahead and colorize this, and we could change the color. So there it is as a green layer. And I'll click OK. And I could say make a new look called Look 12. And that gets stored in the comp. As we go through, see different layers get turned off and on with different combinations. So if I really like this combination, I say, you know, I'd like to see that, but let's add the pill bottle to that look as well. Notice it's no longer part of this look. I can either make a new look or say, update this look. And now that look has been updated. Now, as you make different looks, you have several options. You could say if you want a layer to be on or off, so you could memorize its visibility, and you can actually do things like control effects. Let's go ahead and select the pill bottle and add a drop shadow to it. There we go. Spread it out a little bit, make it a little bigger. And let's go ahead and put a color overlay on top and set that to match the blue in the background. But this time we'll change it to a hue mode, so it tints the bottle and I'll click OK. I can make this a new look by clicking the Create New Layer Comp icon here and say, you know what, go ahead and memorize the visibility of the layer and the appearance of a layer style, and click OK. Let's name that Look 13, and we'll toggle back to Look 9. And notice two very different looks. One has the layer style with the drop shadow and the blue tint, and the other does not. No tint, no drop shadow. And that's how simple it is. We can go ahead and position it on the screen differently. Let's go ahead and move this pill bottle so it's a little further over on the right here, and make a new layer comp. And we'll call that Look 14. And we'll tell it to memorize visibility and position as well. There we go. Now, notice when we went back, went back to look 9, it didn't move the position. That's because when the layer comp was created, it didn't actually memorize position. So if you find yourself in a situation like that, you might have to move that back and then double click and make sure that position is checked so it updates. A quick refresh and it's set. Let's step through there, there we go. And you see we have several different looks. Now there's another example, let's move that back. Double click to update and make sure that position is actually stored. Now for safety, when I make a new layer comp, I generally check visibility, position, and layer styles. That way I'm protected against future changes very easily. Let's go ahead and click OK and we'll refresh that and you get the idea. 
So lots of options, the ability to add different combinations of layers being visible and all sorts of things. And you see that one Photoshop document can contain several different looks. Now, this is all very useful, but where it gets truly useful is how easy it is to get to the client. Fortunately, Photoshop comes with some helpful scripts that are related to using layer comps. If you choose File Scripts, you'll see these. They all say Layer Comps. The last one will go to a web photo gallery. So you could build a website so the client can review all the different options. And it's really quite simple. The next one will go to a PDF, which is useful for email purposes. And the last one will actually send this out to a series of still files. So you can go ahead and write these out as separate Photoshop files or JPEGs to attach to an email, etc. The nice thing here is that if you spend the extra work making the layer comps, Photoshop makes it really easy to export them as individual files or as a PDF or website for the client to review. Layer comps save a tremendous amount of time and you really need to make them a part of your motion graphics workflow. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington and be sure to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com.